Oh, hello. My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And today we're going to ask the question, are front wides worth it? Well, it's not as easy as adding two speakers and calling it a day. There's a lot more involved than you might be aware of. It's more of an investment. So let's get into it, shall we? One. Which ones are the front wides again? In a traditional 7.1 setup, you have your front sound stage, surrounds, back surrounds, and subwoofer. So your front wides are located in between the surrounds and your front left and right speakers. Oh yeah, those ones. See, in a movie theater, for example, your front sound stage is completely behind the screen since it's so large. So if you happen to be rocking an acoustically transparent projector screen at home with your left center and right behind it, having front wides will fill in that gap between your surrounds and the screen. Two. Secondly, it's not as easy as checking how many channels your AVR supports, doing the math, and deciding, yeah, sure, let's try out nine ear level speakers and see how it sounds. No, my friends. Just like when manufacturers weirdly decided that only AVRs with nine or more channels could support a full set of pre-outs, they went one step beyond and made it even harder to obtain an AVR that also supports front wides. The Denon X3700H and 4700H are wildly popular because of their price point and because you can use the power of external amps with them if you so choose. But it's not until you get to the X6700H that you finally have software support for front wides. And it ain't cheap. So now you're stuck with choosing an AVR with at least 11 channels if you want front wides. And for some of you, that right there is already a deal breaker. Cool. Have fun on your ivory tower with all your 11 channels, you ungrateful pieces of shit. Three. Here's a fun tidbit about front wides. Not all Atmos mixes support front wides. I'm sorry, what? Some Atmos mixes were mixed with a 7.1.4 configuration in mind. So even though you may have front wide speakers in place, ready and willing to play audio through them, you might be disappointed to find out nothing is coming out of them throughout the entire movie. But isn't Atmos supposed to place objects within 3D space automatically, no matter how many speakers you have? You would think so, but that's not always the case. But I will say it is getting better with more recent 4K Blu-ray releases like from 2019 and on. Since more and more people are investing in home theaters nowadays, the demand for larger speaker configurations has made mixing engineers master their soundtracks beyond 7.1.4 like it was when Atmos first came onto the scene. I say 2019 just for an example because I tested out Avengers Infinity War which came out on Blu-ray in 2018 and Endgame which came out in 2019. Infinity War though? No front wide support that I could hear, which is such a disappointment, since I love demoing the scene where Thor gets his new axe forged and makes his grand entrance onto the battlefield. But the final battle in Endgame, when I literally stuck my ear against the front wide speakers, I would get the occasional sound effect whizzing by. Okay, at least there's something. But maybe it's a Disney thing because I popped in Godzilla from 2014 and it was the same as Endgame. Sparse sound effects that whizzed by or came in and out just to add some immersion to the soundstage. And that came out eight years ago. Same with Midway, sparse sound effects here and there. So already I was like, this isn't that great, TBH. But such is not the case for everything. There are films that were made for front wides, like Godzilla vs. Kong. I know I keep bringing it up like in pretty much in every video these days, but the front wides on that movie were active constantly. Music and sound effects. So since I had such a mix at hand, I kept switching back and forth between 7.2.4 and 9.2.4, rewinding and watching the same small portions of the ocean battle over and over. When Godzilla fires his beam straight up in the air, when Kong leaps across the aircraft carriers, when Godzilla climbs his way on the carrier, when depth charges detonate, when Kong slams his right fist onto the deck after Godzilla almost drowns him, there honestly was something missing when watching it in 7.2.4. There definitely was more immersion with 9.2.4. That's why I kept rewinding and switching back and forth because I wanted to be absolutely sure I wasn't just tricking my brain into thinking I was hearing more. More was definitely there with front wides. Side note. 
Another weird anomaly was better bass extension and aggressive rumbling when I had it set to 9.2.4. This might just be a quirk with the IOTA AVX-17, so I'm still testing this theory. But when I was going back and forth, rewinding over and over, I was simultaneously testing the bass response along with the immersion factor. And sure enough, it wasn't my brain playing tricks on me. I could honestly feel tighter, more aggressive bass literally in my butt with front wides than I did watching it in 7.2.4. So stay tuned for future videos if and when I get my hands on another preamp or AVR that can support front wides. But back to the demos, the Matrix on 4K Blu-ray was just another outstanding Atmos mix. Front wides were almost always active with music and sound effects. No. Although at first, I thought I had an improperly mastered copy of the Matrix. It was only showing five channel plus LFE. I made sure that my 4K Blu-ray player was outputting bitstream and not multi-channel PCM audio. But what I failed to do is double check the audio settings within the disc menu itself. I guess Warner Brothers is notorious for defaulting some of their Blu-ray titles to five channel Dolby Digital audio. So you have to select Atmos to get Atmos. Come on, Warner Brothers. Turns out that was also the case with Aquaman, just FYI. Some other demos I wanted to touch on were Blade Runner 2049, which had very sparse front wide action, no music, and just a very rare short blip of audio. Dang. And the same went for Mad Max Fury Road. I love that Atmos mix, but I did very rarely hear anything coming from the front wides. Again, because I literally stuck my head next to the speaker. I don't have a trend off that shows me where the activity is happening. And lastly, Ford versus Ferrari was disappointing with the front wides as well. I was hoping the crowds in the racing scenes would be more active in the front wides, but not so much. Just the occasional whizzing by of a car in very short bursts or some atmospheric effects, but very quiet compared to the rest of the mix. Double day. Four. But it's not as disappointing as you might think. There is a trick you can do to utilize your front wides more often. Like I hinted at earlier, you get Atmos mixes when you set your Blu-ray player to output bitstream audio. But Atmos is just metadata that hitches a ride on 7.1 Dolby True HD signals. So if you go into your Blu-ray player settings and choose to output multi-channel PCM, then choose Dolby Up Mixing, then it will take your speakers into account, no matter how many you have. When I did that, I could hear music and sound effects almost all the time in my front wides, even with the demos that I mentioned earlier. The only downside of doing that is now you've removed the object-based factor of Atmos and changed it to channel-based. And I went back and forth with that as well, and listening to a pure Atmos bitstream signal was better in the end. Better channel separation, audio had more precise placement within the soundstage, and bass response was more dynamic. So yeah, I got more activity out of my front wides by upmixing a PCM signal, but I still prefer a pure Atmos bitstream signal. Five. So maybe this has intrigued you and now you're thinking about adding front wides to your system. You might be thinking, do I really have to spend $3,000 or more on an AVR that can support front wides, plus the extra cost of two more speakers and speaker wire? Not necessarily. Take Emotiva for instance, their 13.2 Basics MC1 Cinema processor is $999 and supports front wides. But since it's a preamp, you have to get external amps to power your speakers. So with 13 channels, you could get a Basics A7 and A6 for $699 and $649 respectively for a total of $2,347. That's much less than $3,000. Or if you stick with the Basics A7 and A6 amps, but swap out the MC1 for a Tone Winner AT300, that's $2,743. And beyond that, if you swap out for an IOTA AVX17, that would be $3,189. But at that point, you're spending just as much as you would on an X6700H while also sacrificing 8K, eARC, and RO3D support, so to each their own. Bottom line is, there are more options out there than spending at least $3,000. Hooray. So who are front wides for? Well, obviously those who are serious home theater enthusiasts who have a lot of money to spend. Yeah. But I would definitely recommend front wides for those with a front soundstage hidden behind an acoustically transparent projector screen. Those front wides bridge the gap more effectively, making it more immersive for sure. But beyond that, 
I'd say front wides are like 8K TVs right now. They're pretty cool, but not exactly worth the price of admission. But I'll say with the example of Godzilla vs Kong and the Matrix, it is looking like it'll become more commonplace from now on to master an Atmos mix with front wides in mind. So those who already have front wides, good for you. And those planning on adding front wides in a few years down the road, it just might be absolutely worth it by then. Only time will tell. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me on this breakdown of front wide speakers. What did you learn? What did you unlearn? What did you relearn? What did you learn? <sighs> Stupid. Are you interested in front wides now? Are they just not for you? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.